President Cyril Ramaphosa has been sworn in as president for a second term in office at a ceremony in Pretoria. Ramaphosa will co govern the country as head of a new coalition after his party, the African National Congress, on, or ANC, reached a deal with its traditional rival, the Democratic Alliance, or DA. Correspondent say South Africa will now have an unprecedented government, which in itself is an unprecedented move because the two parties don't agree on many things, but have agreed to focus on the things that they agree on. In his inaugural address, President Ramaphosa laid out the agenda for his second term. In the presence of everyone assembled here and in full realization of the high calling I assume as President of the Republic of South Africa, I, Matamera Cyril Ramaphosa, swear that I will be faithful to the Republic of South Africa and will obey observe, uphold, and maintain the Constitution and all other law of the Republic. And I solemnly and sincerely promise that I will always promote all that will advance the Republic and oppose all that may harm it protect and promote the rights of all South Africans, discharge my duties with all my strength and talents to the best of my knowledge and ability and true to the dictates of my conscience. Do justice to all and devote myself to the well-being of the Republic and all its people. So help me God. We are now joined by Achike Chude, Africa Affairs Analyst and National Secretary, Nigerian Union of Journalists. Good morning, Mr. Chude, and welcome to The Morning Show. Achike Chude, good morning. How are you? How are you? I miss the point where you became national secretary of the of the NUJ. You, you didn't you didn't tell me on this day live, but congratulations all the same. But I don't think you escape with the implications. Yeah, it, it, it. Huh? Uh, no, 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 don't worry. I, I don't intend to run anywhere. I don't intend to escape. My when, hands are. When, when next you are coming well, it's for It's a pleasure for talking this to you guys life. again. <laughs> anyway, quickly. Your yeah. take, yeah, of course, on, absolutely on yes. the latest development in South Africa, and what uh, President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa describes as the beginning of a new era. Indeed, literally, is the beginning of a new era. Uh, uh, yeah, um, to a very large extent. Of course, uh, when he says it's the beginning of a new era, obviously he's saying that within a context. Uh, within the context that uh, the ANC finds itself in a, an unprecedented situation, scoring its uh, lowest uh, numbers, percentage numbers in the last election, ANC scored about 40%, and that was absolutely not enough uh, for it to form a government. So in order to form a government, the ANC has to, you know, had to have uh, you know, a partnership that under normal circumstances they would not have felt good about. They had to form a partnership with the rival Democratic Alliance uh, with which it does not uh, have uh, some serious uh, ideological uh, agreements, and then about four other political parties to be able to govern South Africa. So from that perspective, yes, it is an unprecedented, it's a new era. But then there is nothing new, really, if you look at uh, the economic system that is in practice, that is in vogue, uh, I mean, that is in practice in South Africa, is the same economic uh, system, it is the same political system, the actors are essentially the same in South Africa. Uh, so you cannot expect anything new. Right? I think, but what I think people will be looking at is how uh, this uh, coalition can be able to actually move South Africa forward. Of course, if you look at uh, the DA, for instance, the DA on, has strong ideological uh, differences with, uh, uh, with the ANC on the issue of uh, black, uh, you know, 
uh, 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 the, uh, the, build, the building of uh, the black economy uh, that uh, ANC you know, had been on for quite some time and has not exactly done so well with it in terms of uh, you know, liberalizing the economy and then you know, uh, reducing inequality and giving empowering uh, the black people or blacks in South Africa. They have not been fantastic. Land distribution has continued to be a problem uh, in South Africa within you know, his government. And then you also have uh, the issue of uh, even the health bill that was signed before now, uh, just before the election. Uh, the Democratic Alliance is saying that uh, you already have a health system that is uh, groaning in South Africa. And so this uh, health bill uh, is not going to help, can, would only you know, uh, foster the collapse of uh, the health system in South Africa. And so you, that gives you an idea. And of course, issues of uh, fiscal policies, uh, they are in complete disagreement with uh, you know, the ANC. Uh, and of course, structural issues, uh, structural economic issues also, uh, though they have been embraced by investors. But we are going to see how this uh, uh, very strange marriage you know, can uh, be consumed uh, in South Africa. So these are the immediate challenges that are facing uh, uh, the, the, the ANC, the, the new government. Uh, so it, it, like the president says, it's a new era. <laughs> We're going to see how that plays out. Yeah, I was going to mention the strange marriage, um, strange bedfellows, ANC and the DA. Uh, I was just, just before you came on, I was having a conversation around the fact that this had happened or this was tested in the UK with the Lib Dems and the Conservatives coming together to form a government that didn't work. And that's why you can imagine, because like you already highlighted, their ideologies, their focus, I mean, left wing, right wing um, ideologies, one is social welfare, the other is um, free market. How will this work, you know, in, in terms of priorities and in terms of what you talked about, um, prosperity and, um, you know, distribution of lands in South Africa, especially for the black South Africans, it, it, it's mind boggling. And so it'll be interesting to find out to see, will this really work? MK already is already mocking it. They've called it that it's a farce, that the inauguration was a farce and they're just not going to be part of this. Do you think perhaps that the ANC ought to have gone more for a government of national unity than this coalition government since they couldn't maybe find a middle ground with, the, with, uh, with MK or the EFF? Yeah, well, well uh, I think it is said that it's in the bright day. I mean, it's in the you know, in the bright under the sun or the bright day that you look for the black sheep. So I think uh, from the very beginning, they already have an idea uh, that this might be a fractious uh, relationship, but they have a duty, they have a responsibility to try as much as possible uh, to make it work. Uh, in your opener, when you were talking about describing the situation in South Africa, you quoted the Democratic Alliance, you know, as saying that they will concentrate on, their, on the similarities that they have. But eventually, you can only do that for so long. Eventually, the differences will rear your head, and then decisions will have to be taken. So I think, you know, they are, they are all going to walk a, a, thin, a, thin, a thin line. Uh, it's about accommodation, it's about balancing. They have to look for ways to balance their differences, you know, while insisting that uh, the fundamentals also uh, must be adhered to. Uh, otherwise, uh, you're going to have a government that will, be, that will find it very difficult uh, to succeed in the, whatever in their objectives uh, because of uh, the crisis within. So it is this crisis that they have to manage. And don't also forget that uh, you have uh, the opposition waiting in the wings, licking their lips uh, with uh, the belief that uh, this marriage is not going to work. Uh, so there is a greater burden on the government to ensure that uh, this partnership, regardless of uh, the uh, fractious uh, divisions, uh, we just have to look for a way to work. Especially, but I think that one of the things that they will be looking at again, and that might be a problem for the ANC, is this issue of economic empowerment for the black people. It has not exactly you know, succeeded. The whole essence of even liberty in South Africa at the end of apartheid promised a new era of uh, wealth distribution and the destruction of uh, you know in the inequality or reduction of inequality in South Africa, which has been skewed heavily, uh, you know, in favor of uh, the whites. Uh, land ownership is still heavily skewed in favor of the whites, and attempts to redistribute land has always uh, been very, very contentious, you know. And so, uh, but and of course, DA, you would expect that the DA, being white, a white-led, you know, um, uh, political party, will stand strong when it comes to the issue 
of a redistribution of, of land, for instance, in South Africa. So uh, that, that, I suspect, might be where the bubble might begin, the dam might begin to crack at the seams if they don't uh, manage it well. Okay, I mean, I'll also join Dr. Vazi, congratulations, Asuke, on your position as uh, uh, NUJ uh, Secretary, and it's, it's good to see you doing very well. A uh, couple of things. Let's Thank you. scenario plan a bit. How long do you think this will last until Ramaphosa calls for a snap election? Because obviously, he doesn't want to be in this position when he has no choice. He doesn't have a legitimacy. This is not a legitimacy for him. So how long yeah. do you think this will be? Secondly, yeah. and how long do you think this will pan out in the parliament before you start to see the likes of EFF uh, starts to attack Ramaphosa about the fact that the DA is a white party. Although the DA has come out to say they're not a white party and all of that, they're all inclusive. But that is also going to come in. Yeah, well, you know, the DA has been trying all these years to try to uh, pander to the black uh, population in uh, South Africa. And they've made a bit of a success of it. But obviously, what the DA is, the DA is, is a wide led, you know, um, a political party that has been making gains. I think they scored about 22% in, uh, in the last election. They have been doing badly before now. Uh, and so, uh, how long that will take? I, I, you know, we, we cannot, even if you look into the crystal ball, it's going to be a bit hazy. We might be looking at a few months before uh, talks of uh, crisis and disagreements begin to emerge. We might talk about maybe two years from now, uh, but I think a lot will depend. I think that the leadership of uh, all the parties involved in this uh, strange alliance will want it to work. So they are going to hold out for as long as, as uh, they can. Uh, but whether they, they would succeed, I think, is contentious because this is an experiment that has not occurred before. And I think that uh, the president uh, will be loath uh, to call for you know, a snap election uh, because it might not go well for him and it might not also be good for the DA. In fact, if they are not able to do anything substantial and they become fractious and begin to quarrel even in the public space, I see them losing grounds when such an, if such an election is eventually called. I think there will be problems. They could even lose more grounds. You know, and so I, I suspect that they will do every single you know, thing possible to manage whatever differences uh, they have, especially in the public space, uh, to see whether they can hold out for as long as, as, as they can. Uh, but like I said, like we, we don't know what is going to happen. A lot will depend on the leadership. And then again, not just that, what they are able to achieve on ground. Because they need to hit the ground running. Uh, the issue of, part, I mean, the, one of the reasons for the loss of the dwindling you know, uh, fortune of uh, the ANC has been the fact that ANC has not been able to do anything about the inequality and the poverty and the disillusionment and the despair in South, among South Africans. Uh, you know, so these are the things that have been propelling people in going into the election in South Africa. Well, like you said, it's time to hit the ground running. The, he's been well sworn in now. Yesterday we showed the live coverage of the very colorful ceremony with poems and um, so that interfaith one. And then, of course, world leaders showing up. We just showed a video there of our own president, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, present there, uh, being received with a warm embrace and handshake by the president of South Africa, Cyril Wamaposa. Thank you so much for your time today, Mr. Chikechude.